could I uh, introduce my chaplain, Reverend uh, Mike Johnson, who will give a thought for the day. Good evening, everyone. And thank you for uh, asking me, Mr. Mayor, to be your chaplain. It's always dangerous when the mayor says to you, would you like to have a thought for the day? After getting any minister to say anything means you don't know how long you're going to be in here for. So I apologize in advance. Today I had uh, a great honor. I did a funeral for a family last week and they very kindly sent me a bottle of malt whiskey. I'm not suggesting that's the usual payment for a chaplain. And of course it was delivered by Amazon. I was thinking about Jeff Bezos then. I don't know if you've noticed that Jeff Bezos is interested in so many different things, apart from it would appear paying his taxes. And this month, he's announced that he's going to invest in Altros Labs, which are a company who are looking for the scientific quest for immortality. Jeff Bezos has decided that he's got so much to do, he wishes to live forever. Uh, it's very much science approach that death is a problem to be solved. However, I did notice one interesting response from somebody who actually said, we as human, human beings often don't know what to do on a wet Sunday afternoon. What are we going to do with eternity? Now, maybe you're thinking that's a bit odd for a, chi for a priest to be sitting there talking about problems with eternity. I believe in eternal life. But I also believe that time is given to us as a valuable asset, something we are called to use. Each of you here have given your time, your talents, your gifts to serve the community of Gedling. Each of you here has come to pass time, pass nominations, pass jobs, scrutinize, share together and work together. You're here to hold each other accountable and maybe even play a little bit of politics. But at the heart of what you do tonight lay the people of Gedling. At the heart of the decisions you make, of the things you carry out, the realities of budgets, the debates and disagreements, at the middle of all of this are the lives of the people of Gedling. And how what you decide impacts on them. If those people were to be watching you tonight, watching what you did and how you operate together, how you work and share together, would they look at you and think they're just a wet Sunday afternoon? Or would they see a group of people, whatever political parties you come from, who are here to do their best? Would they see a group of people who regard them highly, who seek the best for them within the constraints that are laid upon them? Would they see people that hold them in respect? I often feel that the mark we make on eternity is small, but at the best it makes something that will change lives for everyone for the better. Now I know the mayor has said that I'm not to say a prayer, but what I will do is offer you all a blessing. May you be blessed in the work that you do tonight. May you bless each other in the job that you do tonight. And what you do, may it be a blessing to Gedling, to its people, its communities, and its families. Because that is what we're here for. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Mike. That was uh, very apposite. Um, I've got two announcements to make uh, before I tell you about what I've been doing. Uh, the first is with regard to live streaming. Mr. Uh, Mayor. Mr. Mayor, you're not taking apologies. Oh, I'm sorry. You know, I, I haven't done this for six years, so excuse me if I make a mistake. Yes, uh, Councillor Wilkinson, do you have any apologies? Thank you, thank you, Mr. Mayor. I've got apologies from Councillor Boyle, Councillor Feeney, and Councillor Hemingway. 
Councillor Smith. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Apologies from Councillor Simon Murray. Thank you. Now, uh, this meeting will be live streamed and event... I I'm sorry. That's I all right. I'm but sorry, Mike. You you've got an apology. Apologies from Councillor Bosworth. Thank you. Make sure you do that next time. <laughs> uh, try again. This meeting will be live streamed and available for subsequent playback through the Council's website. You should be aware that the Council is a data controller under the Data Protection Act. Data collected during this webcast will be retained in accordance with the Council's published policy. I could I ask uh, that you remain seated at the microphone when you speak so that uh, the cameras in the chamber are able to see you. If you would like to stand, please use the lectern. Uh, now, as you know, I wasn't able to be at the first meeting of the council of my mayoral year. Uh, and uh, since that date, I've undertaken uh, Wendy and I have undertaken 27 uh, engagements on behalf of the council. I, I'm not going to go through them all. There's one or two I would like to just uh, uh, expand on a little. Uh, and they were both work of the locality coordinators, one in Netherfield and one in Newstead. Uh, in Netherfield, I was part of the judging for the garden competition, and in Newstead, I gave out the prizes. Uh, and both those were uh, very enjoyable occasions uh, and uh, a credit to the locality coordinators for organising things in their area. Uh, obviously, it's not been all fun, uh, although I did attend, uh, I have attended two engagements in my own ward, and I'd be delighted to attend engagements in your wards. If you have any coming up, contact the Civic Department for my availability. Uh, one was uh, the repainting, uh, well, the the ceremony of the refurbishment of the plane that got vandalised uh, at St John's School in Colic and uh, uh, Gedlin Borough Council were instrumental in providing free cleaning uh, facilities for that. Uh, the other was uh, one woman who decided she'd have a fun day in support of uh, Macmillan uh, cancer support, and in, in a two or three hours, raised £900. Uh, the last one I want to bring to your attention, well, it was a couple which were quite moving ceremonies. One was at uh, Gedling Crematorium for the unveiling of a memorial to those who had died from COVID in our area. And the other was at Coppice Lodge, care home in Arnold, they had a memorial service because they lost, they lost 17 residents there. Uh, this thing has not gone away and it behoves all of us to be extremely careful, especially when we come to the uh, winter weather. So that's the end of my announcements for this year. Uh, move on to item four on the agenda, which is to approve as a correct record the minutes of the meeting held on the 14th of July 2021. Councillor Clark. Yeah, th uh, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Before I do that, where's the official robes tonight? Is there a reason for changing protocol? Uh, it's not protocol, apparently. Uh, and I did mention it at the end of the Labour group meeting on Monday that I wasn't going to be wearing robes. So we're sitting, we're sitting down, Mr. Mayor. We normally stand up. I know that's probably down to these things, or we can all walk across there. Uh, and we're not having the robes now. No. 
Right, OK, then. Thank you. I'll move the approval to correct record the minutes of the meeting held on the 14th of July. Thank you. Councillor Payne. Thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. Second the minutes, uh, and in doing so, just want to make the point clear for the public record that the Labour group has decided this evening, in accordance with the ongoing government, latest government guidance for this meeting, given the circumstances in terms of number, number of people in the room, uh, who we do not usually interact with, that we will be wearing face masks in the chamber throughout the meeting. We will be only taking our masks off when we speak, Mr Mayor, at which point masks will be put uh, back on. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Payne. I, I should uh, state that the reason I'm not wearing a mask is that I shall be talking, uh, and if I, if I have to spend the time putting my mask on and off, the meeting will be a lot longer than it should be. Uh, move on to declaration of interest. Does anybody have a, a declaration of interest on any item on this agenda? Oh, I'm sorry. Done it again. Uh, go back to uh, four. Uh, the minutes have been moved and seconded. All those in favour, please show. Any against? Thank you. I think that was unanimous. Uh, and now, item five on the agenda. Are there any declarations of interest on any item on the agenda tonight? Nope. Thank you. Uh, to deal with item six, to deal with any petitions received under standing order 8A. None received, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. Item seven, to answer questions asked by the public under standing order eight. Again, none received, Mr. Mayor. Uh, item eight, to answer questions asked by members of the council under standing order number nine. Mr. Uh, Mayor, we have received questions from councillors Adams, Sam Smith, Martin Smith, Elliot and Greensmith. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, councillor Adams, would you like to ask your question? Thank you, uh, Mayor Lawrence. Yes, I just want, before I kick off though, just, I just want to ask, sorry, a quick thing about the agenda pack. Uh, in the, from the January's meeting, had the questions in the actual agenda itself. Is there any reason why they aren't in the agenda pack this time? Mr Mayor, if I may answer, it was a timing issue, uh, Councillor Adams. It was a, you know, depends when we published, if any more come at a later stage during that, that time. So it, it was simply a timing issue. Thank you. <clears throat> so yes, my question. Can the council please advise on its commitment to tree planting across the borough during the remainder of this council? Thank you. Who will answer this, please? Uh, Councillor Clark. Thanks, Mr. Mayor. Thanks, Mike, for the uh, question. And I'll, I'll give you the answer that's uh, in front of me. This administration is committed to planting trees, and the Gedlin plan sets out our ambition to plant 500 UK trees. I want to take this off for a minute. UK trees across the borough each year to mark the lead up to the 50th anniversary of the creation of Gedlin Borough. Uh, we've exceeded that. I know we've exceeded that at the moment. And uh, in 2019, stroke 20, a total of 660 new trees were planted. And in 2021, a further 1,040 trees were planted. These were in various sites, including Arnott Hill Park, King George V, Burton Road Jubilee Park, Willow Park, Thackeris Lane, Arno Vale Recreation Ground, Carlton Hill and Recreation Ground, and Gedling Country Park. This year, we have already created a community orchard at Gedling Country Park, and we have committed to a two to three year green lung project that will see further proposed tree planting at Digby Park, which is four acres, along a green corridor footpath route to Arnold Lane and beyond, planting a memorial woodland in the Gedling Country Park, six acres there. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Uh, do you have a supplementary, Councillor Adams? I do, yes. Thank you, uh, Mayor Lawrence. Yes. Um, 
So from that, you mentioned Carlton Hill, which is which is great. What I'm what I'm trying to understand as well is 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 there a reason why we haven't planted any trees on Arnold Front Street? Um, talking about sort of from Eagle Square towards the Leisure Centre. I know there's some on Carlton Hill. Obviously, Mappy Top have got some. Netherfield have got some. Um, but I just wonder why not Arnold? Because um, these could have been obviously funded as well from the uh, Government Welcome Back Fund after COVID. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Councillor Clark. Yeah, thanks, Mr. Mayor. Sorry, Mike, I, mi I missed that. Where was it? We've not planted some. Sorry. On Front Street. Right, OK. Well, we have planted some trees on Front Street, actually, in the market, but there are only three at the moment, and uh, I envisage that there'll be more, and there'll be more around the uh, uh, new market when it's, uh, when it's completed and building works allow us to do so. But if we have got sites, and people have got sites, and I, I, I would ask those that are forwarded to the offices, and they can be, they can be actually, you know, uh, put in, because uh, and the more we plant, the, obviously the, the environment will be a lot better. The, uh, the fact that uh, I think we've planted several across where the uh, gar is running at the moment because there were so many trees knocked down there and taken out, obviously for the construction, but this is significant work by the County Council and ourselves to, uh, to actually replant some there. But if you've got some other ideas, some other places and spaces, because actually I was talking to a gentleman this afternoon who came in and uh, he was on about bits of land that uh, Mike, as the chief exec, my, that's been here many years, didn't even know we owned uh, bits it strips of land so if there are places then I think that's you know ideal and it's all part if you remember that the Queen's Canopy which we're going to be putting into uh, into the uh, you know celebrations next year when the Queen is celebrating her 70th year uh, in uh, as you know on the throne uh, we will be looking at to increase that which goes with then with the Commonwealth canopy tree canopy that's across the Commonwealth which is significant every little bit helps as I say is it the Tesco's or somewhere like that thank you Thank you, Councillor Clark. Uh, Councillor Smith, would you like to ask your question? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Can the Council please confirm its commitment to becoming carbon net zero? Who's going to answer this? Me, Madam, uh, Mr Mayor. Uh, I, let me just preface this by saying that we're about to face a suite of questions from uh, the opposition party. And it seems pretty obvious to me what this is all about. Naked political uh, opportunism demonstrated by the supplementary we just heard from Councillor Adams. And, and the reason for that, Mr Mayor, is every single one of this suite of questions you're about to hear and members of the public are about to hear have either been addressed in this chamber, through overview and scrutiny, which is a public meeting, through Cabinet or through uh, substantial and substantive debates uh, in this chamber. There's a theme, though, Mr Mayor, isn't there, that runs through tonight in terms of these questions and indeed the motion later. It's either that the Conservative group haven't done their own work or that they couldn't be bothered to turn up to the meetings and ask the questions uh, when they had the opportunity. More about that uh, in the later questions, uh, Mr Mayor. But for now, in response to Councillor Smith, I'll restate what's been stated in here several times. What was stated in the Labour Group manifesto that led to one of the biggest electoral successes in 2019, and what is stated in the Council plan as well, because he clearly can't be bothered to read it himself. In November 2019, Gedlin Borough Council declared a climate emergency, much before the fanfare that we now hear from the County Council, alongside which a pledge to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2030 was made. To mitigate carbon emissions and improve the borough's resilience to a changing climate, a new carbon management strategy and action plan has been created. There has also recently been an adoption of low carbon guidance in relation to planning. We're going to hear more about planning. Uh, later from the opposition councillors, which is being presented to Cabinet tomorrow. I look forward to you being there, Councillor Smith, given your significant interest uh, in, in net zero, because I can tell you there hasn't been one uh, opposition councillor bothered to turn up to Cabinet uh, for a significant amount of time. Uh, this will go for approval uh, to public consultation. This strategy, Mr Mayor, outlines Gedlin Borough Council's firm commitment and ambition to show leadership in becoming carbon net zero. To further support this, we are currently recruiting a climate change officer, another commitment by this Labour administration delivered, who will take up post shortly and help deliver the action plan. We are under no assumption and realise, Mr Mayor, that everyone is involved in tackling the climate emergency and in this ambition. The Council, Officers, councillors, local businesses, 
the third sector and our residents. Everybody has a part to play in this, including uh, the government. And let me just also tie this question to the previous question to the leader. Because if you want to talk about planting trees, it might have been a courtesy for Nottinghamshire County Council to speak to the local county councillors and the borough councillor about your recent announcement in terms of Bestwood Country Park, which for the last few years has been run and administered by our decent officers in this council because the county council weren't competent enough to run it themselves. And if you want to talk about planting trees, this borough council, this Labour administration, planted hundreds along the Gedling access route after the county council, Conservative ran, squashed them, cut them down and turned their back on them without replacing them. So if we, we're going to have a sensible debate in this chamber and we're going to ask questions that haven't yet been debated in other, or other forums that are of genuine interest and are put with genuine intent, then let's have that debate. But if you want every single meeting to be Yabu politics and grandstanding in the lead up to the next borough elections, then bring it on. Thank you, Councillor Payne. Do you have a supplementary, Councillor Smith? Thank you, Mr Chairman. I'd like to thank um, the Deputy Leader for his answer, which I think I heard somewhere in his reply there. Just a point on tree planting and invites. Um, he mentions me doing our, or the Conservative Party doing his own work. Instead of homework, he might want to try communicating with his own group because his ward member for Bestwood, Councillor Gibbons, was at the tree planting, invited by the County Council. So um, maybe go and uh, talk to your own group there. Um, but can, I have your question. Can, yep, yep. Can, the, can, can he com tell us that in the commitment to this strategy that is um, going to be completed. Will the strategy be focused on Gedling Borough Council and its remits to become carbon neutral, or will it be Gedling Borough, Gedling Borough as a whole? Councillor Payne? Oh, I think I just need to repeat it again. Uh, he wasn't listening. Uh, in November 2019, Gedling Borough Council declared a climate emergency, alongside which pledge to achieve net zero carbon emissions by 2030 was also uh, made, in case you didn't hear it uh, in the question. Uh, Councillor Smith. Our plan, as I think I said in the last paragraph, in case you didn't hear it, recognises that this is not just down to the council, Gedling Borough Council, this is about the whole place, local businesses, the third sector, our residents, community groups, the fantastic work that Gedling Climate Change Group who have been doing, that, uh, who I have met, Mike Avery's met, uh, and the Chief Executive uh, has met as well. And he gives me an opportunity to commend Councillor Gibbons. Well done, Councillor Gibbons, who is absolutely right, did turn up to the event when he'd read it in the press. And do you know what he read? A quote from the guy who sat next to you, none other than Councillor Adams, fanfare in trees being planted in Bestwood Country Park. And where were you, Councillor Adams, at the event? You weren't there. So don't lecture this group about commitment to planting trees. Thank you very much, Councillor Smith. Thank you, Councillor Payne. Uh, Councillor Martin Smith, would you like to ask your question, please? Uh, thank you, Mayor. Um, can the Council confirm its progress on moving its fleet to carbon, uh, zero carbon vehicles? Who is it going to answer this? Uh, it's me again, uh, Mr Mayor. This was covered in the Cabinet. It was also covered by uh, substantive discussion in the Waste Policy Group. Fantastic work by Councillor Liz Clooney and uh, her, her colleagues. I'll say more about that later. The answer to your question, Councillor uh, Martin Smith, is fleet vehicle technology is moving forward rapidly. As a council, we have adopted the EcoStar scheme, a fantastic scheme, pushed very early on by Councillor Hollingsworth to my left, uh, for our fleet, which aims on using cleaner fuels and technologies by embedding green criteria in the fleet procurement process to reduce greenhouse gas emissions and air pollutants. It rates the performance of individual vehicles and a fleet's overall operation using star ratings, and each member receives a tailored roadmap in quotation marks to ensure their vehicles are running as efficiently and economically as possible. We scored, we, this council scored, the top rating of five stars when last assessed. We are currently trialling ultra and low emission vehicles, such as electric vehicles, EVs, pavement sweepers in particular, and hybrid vehicles as an alternative to diesel and petrol. When the time is right and the funding is made uh, available, we will look to convert our current vehicle fleet to electric or another green fuel type, 
such as hydrogen. The Nottinghamshire Waste Partner Group has set up a fleet procurement internal group to look at this very specific issue, and they are meeting at regional and local level to discuss green fleet procurement steps across the whole of Nottinghamshire to ensure we are prepared in time for the 2030 deadline. And I'd just say, uh, Councillor Smith, you will uh, know this, that we, I remember when we took on a, uh, the, I think we were one of the first councils in Nottinghamshire to take on a small electric vehicle, and the battery was awful, the technology wasn't great, it didn't have a fantastic range, and crucially, although maybe not as crucially in relation to that vehicle, because it wasn't a freighter in terms of household waste, really struggled on some of our hills. Probably not so in Red Hill, where I present, represent, probably not so in Ravenshead, where you represent. And at that point, technology was not advanced uh, enough. So that's not an excuse. That's simply a point to say that we have different circumstances here to maybe some of the uh, flatter areas. But there is a significant amount of work going on in relation to it. I think we have made good progress in terms of EcoStars, in terms of uh, dipping our toe in the water, in terms of electric vehicles. The technology has now advanced and we're working with people regionally uh, to push it forward, including with uh, the County Council. So I hope that answers your question, Councillor Smith. Thank you, Councillor Payne. Do you have a supplementary? Uh, yes, I'd just like to thank the uh, Deputy Leader for his comprehensive answer and um, delighted to hear the progress that the Council is making uh, and also about the star rating. Um, um, my supplementary um, is to do with the vehicles that the Council uh, licences, such as taxis. Uh, does this plan actually include those vehicles as well uh, or, or do, and does the Council intend to include those in the future? Councillor Payne? Thanks, Councillor Smith. Uh, very good question. Again, that is in some of the documentation that's already publicly available. Uh, you'll see in terms of the Cabinet report uh, tomorrow. And I think, critically, to answer your question, I think it goes back to what I said to Councillor Sam Smith. If we don't tackle some of these issues in terms of the private sector, in terms of heating systems in our own homes, in terms of some of the other issues that the government are grappling with as well, frankly, we won't hit the target uh, by 2030. So it's absolutely got to include... Uh, working with our licensed uh, vehicles as well uh, through our licensing um, role. We've, we've, I genuinely meant what I said in response to Councillor Sam Smith. We all have to play our part in this because we as Gedling Borough Council are not going to be able to achieve that commitment on our, on our own. Thank you, Thank you Councillor Payne. Uh, I've got a question now from Councillor Elliott. Would you like to ask it? Thank you, Mayor. Yes, my question, quite simple. What determines the size of a bin a resident slash household gets? Who's going to answer this one? Councillor Clark. Thanks, Mr Mayor. Thank you for the question, Boyd. Gellingborough Council has a legal duty under the Environmental Protection Act 1990 to collect household waste. Section 46 of the Act relates to what local authorities can require in terms of receptacles for household waste, including bin size and access to bins. Local authorities are required to meet higher recycling and composting targets under UK laws and can be penalised if they fail to meet these targets. These changes are designed to increase the level of a household recycling and composting, thereby reducing the amount of waste incinerated or thrown into landfills. To support the achievement of these targets, Gedlinborough Council are replacing the generic 240-litre bin uh, that were previously provided to properties with bins that are a size appropriate to each household. Households with up to three residents are entitled up to 180 size bin, which equates to 60 litres per person, a capacity which has been calculated is adequate in accordance with the research. This was undertaken by the industry of organisations such as RAP, Waste and Resources Action Programme Charity. To achieve this, Gedlinborough Council are gradually replacing bins with the appropriate sizes as and when bins need replacing. As rolling this out in one go is a resource and a budget demand that cannot be managed while still delivering current service levels. Therefore, when a resident requires a bin replacement due to damage, for example, they will receive a replacement bin that is relevant to their capacity, to their capacity needs. 
The number of residents regard, uh, residing in a given property determine the bin size. Households with one to three people get a 180 litre bin as standard. Households with four to five people get a 240 bin as standards. Households with six to seven people get two by 180 bins as standard. Households with eight or more get two by 240 litre bins as standard. The residual bin requirement will change in line with family size and the residents are able to make requests for an extra or larger bin through both the website and our customer services team. Requests for additional recycling or glass bins can also be made via the website and customer services team. Just to add, Mr Mayor, this I've had recent occasions where people have had their bins changed, uh, disputed it, some with medical needs, etc. And this has been dealt with very, very well by the department. And uh, just again, taking a bit of political, uh, political license, I would like to place on record my thanks to the people who move all these bins. They're doing an excellent job throughout all these uh, problems we've got. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Clark. Do you have a supplementary, Councillor Elliott? Thank you, mate. I, I did have a supplementary. I'd like to thank the leader for his uh, comprehensive answer there. Um, and he has answered my supplementary, so I'd leave it at that. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Elliott. Uh, Councillor Greensmith, would you like to answer your question, please? Thank you. Sorry, I, I had issues with the microphone. Can the portfolio, portfolio holder for finance confirm what percentage of the whole of the UK pet cremation market the Cabinet expected to acquire in the first year when it launched the service? Thank you very much, uh, Mr Mayor. We, we missed you on the 5th of July 2021, Councillor Greensmith. Uh, it was a public meeting of overview and scrutiny from your group, uh, just in case you don't speak to them outside of meetings. It was Councillor Sam Smith and Councillor Martin Smith. Uh, this very issue was addressed, but uh, I'm quite happy to repeat again uh, the answer to the question, given that uh, you didn't turn up yourself and clearly your fellow members didn't communicate back to you. We had a very, very long discussion in depth about the pet cremation service. And I would have thought if your members were interested in the issue, they'd have turned up to the public meeting and asked uh, questions about it. Because I sat there, the leader sat there. We had a very positive discursive meeting chaired by Councillor Liz Clooney, where we went into all this detail. But uh, for your sake, Councillor Greensmith, I'll just repeat what I said at the, uh, at the meeting. Thank you for your question. As I said, it was previously answered at the Overview and Scrutiny Committee on the 5th of July 2021, a committee that does very good work. The pet cremation service that Gedlin launched was never intended to operate as a UK national service. Instead, it was aimed at the local Nottinghamshire market with an ambition to achieve 8.5% market share by engaging with local veterinary services who euthanise pets on a daily basis. This equated to 34 pets per week, which is not an unrealistic figure, considering we were also targeting the border overlaps into Lincolnshire, Leicestershire and Derbyshire. This is also set in the context of published data that suggests 90% of pets nationally are cremated and there are 9 million dogs and 10.9 million cats in the UK. The original market plan identified that there were nine veterinary practices listed on the vet directory within Gedling and around 40 in the wider Nottingham area, many with more than one branch. Research identified that approximately 50 pet cadavers were sent for cremation per week by veterinary services in the borough. One veterinary practice alone reported sending 25 to 30 cadavers for cremation per week across its Nottinghamshire uh, branches. So hopefully that gives you both the answer to the question, Councillor Greensmith, uh, and uh, some context as well. Let me just finish, uh, Mr Mayor, by making the point that we've heard questions about this issue tonight, and we've heard questions about waste, which both myself and the leader have addressed. On the 5th of July, a waste policy working group was set up by Overview and Scrutiny. It was chaired by our Chair of Overview and Scrutiny, Councillor Liz Clooney, and it was an invite out to all of Overview and Scrutiny across party committee about who wanted to take part. It covered these issues we have dealt with tonight, 
but it covered much, much more. And the voluntary elected members who came forward to take part were Councillor Andrew Elwood, Councillor Mike Hope, Councillor Paul Wilkinson, Councillor Paul Feeney, Councillor Jim Creamer, Councillor Michael Boyle, and Councillor Marge Paling. The meeting met on Monday the 26th of July, it met on Monday the 9th of August, it also met on Monday the 23rd of August. It talked about performance data, it talked about supervisors, it talked about elements of waste policy, it talked about electric vehicles, it talked about the size of bins, it talked about technology, Council it talked Payne. about draft... Council this is relevant to the answers to the questions, Mr Mayor, if you'd allow me to finish. It talked about a raft of issues, it talked about a raft of issues, and you will have heard from my answer, Mr Mayor, it was attended by Labour, Liberal Democrat and independent councillors only. Out of the entire Conservative group, not one member bothered to turn up where these issues were addressed. I think that is a crying shame. If they'd turned up, they'd have heard answers to these questions. They'd have genuinely been able to take part in the discussion, but they chose not to, and instead they chose tonight to ask five questions, no doubt for social media, no doubt for political grandstanding purposes, that haven't really achieved a great deal. All they've achieved is myself and the leader repeating points that have already been made on the public record in this chamber, in Cabinet, and in overview and scrutiny. And I hope at the next meeting, Councillor Adams leading your group, you'll do a bit better than you have done this time. Thank you, Mr Mayor. I think you've made your point, Councillor Payne. Uh, Councillor Greensmith, do you have a supplementary? Yes, I do. Thank you, um, uh, Mayor. Um, Councillor Payne, according to findings in the recent BDO internal audit report, which I am a committee member, it states the original forecasting was unrealistic. For example, per the um, internal audit report, G uh, Gedling Borough Council assumed that they would have over 16% of the whole of the UK pet cremation market in the first year. With subsequent year's targets, you've Sorry, not taken into... Greensmith, could you ask the question, I am please? getting to the question. With subsequent year's targets not taking into account previous income, so has the portfolio holder for finance just misled this council with his earlier answer? Councillor Clark. Councillor Payne, I'm sorry. Grow up, Councillor Greensmith. If you were a sensible, serious member of the Audit Committee that genuinely cared about an internal audit report about this issue, you would have bothered to turn up to the public meeting about over and scrutiny, where I answered that exact question. And how dare you sit there tonight and say that I have misled this council. I've just given you a straightforward and honest answer to a question that if you go back and look at the recording, I addressed in the overview and scrutiny committee. But you're not serious about being a serious audit uh, member. Instead, you want to stand here in the chamber and grandstand. Was the issue about setting up the pet cremation service difficult? Yes, it was. Has it been perfect from the outset? No, it hasn't. Was it the right ambition and aspiration of this council to do, to try and intervene in a market where people have lost their pets and then have to pay through the nose for the cremation service? I believe it was. Have we got everything right? No, we haven't. Are the auditors in their entirety right in their report? And I said this at the overview and scrutiny committee and I have no compunction in saying it again. No, I don't think they were because you can compare apples and pears. There are some people who talk about 10.9 million uh, dogs and 9 million, 10 .9 million dogs and 9 million cats or vice versa. There are other people that talk about different market shares. It's a bit like criticism myself talking to different lawyers. You can get a different answer to the same question each time. But for you to have the audacity to sit there tonight and say that I have deliberately misled this council is below you, Councillor Smith, and below the debate we're Count, having. Councillor Payne. You, no, I'm sorry, Count, Count, no, I'm sorry Payne. Mr Mayor. Councillor no, Payne, Mr. Mayor. please. No, I'm sorry, Mr Mayor. An accusation no, Councillor been... Payne, please. Uh, you, and that's enough from you as well. Uh, it, she asked a question, did you mislead the council? If you... You didn't, you've said that, you haven't, and I think that's an answer to the question. The question's been asked, Mr Mayor, and I'm answering it. The insinuation was very clear. You might not think the allegation about saying that somebody's been misled is serious. I do. I do think it... No, I'm sorry, 
I'm sorry, Councillor Payne, I do find that serious. And I'm asking you to answer the question. Which is precisely uh, what I was doing but, before I was but, interrupted. But I, you know, in all due, with all due respect, Councillor Greensmith, whether I agree or not with the question she asked, answered, asked it in a calm manner. It would be good if you could answer yourself in a calm manner. And I, you, 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 you've, you've already intimated that you weren't lying, and we accept that. And that's all she, that's all she needs to know as an answer to her question. I don't think there's anything further to say. I'll take a line from you, Mr Mayor. You just said about all due respect. I think that went out of the window when the question was asked. And I don't think it's your job to be asking questions on behalf of people tonight. I thought it was your job to fairly adjudicate. I've said what I need to say, Mr Mayor. I said it on the public record at over the scrutiny. And if that's how these meetings are going to be going forward, then that's unfortunate, isn't it? The minister set the tone this morning, this, this earlier at the start of the meeting, didn't he? When he talked about being fair and thinking about residents. And I think making the accusation that somebody misled this council is out of order. I'm not, I'm not going yes to take no? any more on this. This is not a matter for debate. Uh, to move on to the next uh, item on the agenda, which is changes to representation on committees and outside bodies. Um, Councillor Wilkinson. Thank you. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Formally moved, reserve the right to speak. Thank you. Uh, I do beg your pardon. Uh, I'll have to ask you to second now, Councillor Clark. You should have moved it. Yeah, second, Mr Mayor. Uh, would Thank anyone you. like to speak on this? Would you like to close it, Councillor Wilkinson? Thank you, Mr Mayor. Formally, uh, formally uh, close. Thank you. All those in favour, please show. Anyone against? I think that was unanimous. Agenda item 10, to receive questions and comments from members concerning any matter dealt with uh, by the executive or by a committee or subcommittee, understanding order 11.1. There are eight sets of minutes on this, this agenda. If any member would like to ask a question or make a comment about any of the minutes, would you please indicate, and can I remind you, you must refer us to the page number that you are speaking about. First of all, item 10, minutes A to D, any comments or questions? Thank you. Items E to H, any comments or questions? Thank you. Uh, item 12, to uh, consider comments of which due notice has been given, understanding order 11.03A. None received, Mr Mayor. Thank you. Item 13, to consider motions, understanding order 12. A motion has been received, which is at the front of your agenda pack. The word of, wording of the motion is set out in the agenda. Councillor Adams, would you like to propose? Thank you, Mayor Lawrence. Yes, the, I've been on the planning committee now for six years. Um, I was on the delegation panel for four years of that time. One thing that I've uh, noticed throughout that period is when we've been talking about properties, we've had long conversations about how many parking spaces have they got, We've had long conversations about, are the living rooms big enough? Are the gardens the correct size? What does it look like from the street? But what's, although there are policies um, that we look to uh, in the planning committee around um, things like permeable driveways, an actual policy that looks directly at the issue of biodiversity, wildlife, plant life, but also the positivity that being surrounded by uh, a, a green area and having that um, access to decent walkways and cycle paths and also enabling things like hedgehogs, which we all know have been, and we've all, I assume we all know, but if we don't, have been in decline over a number of years. They're able to move around their grounds. Many people at the moment are having to retrofit a lot of their houses, their gardens, by putting in 
small hatches in the bottom of their concrete fences in order to enable that to happen. Well, why do we keep doing it to ourselves? That's what I sort of don't understand. Why, why are we still having to retrofit? We all knew there was problems with the environment 10 years ago. We all knew there was problems with animals being able to move around their grounds a number of years ago. We know that butterfly numbers have dropped. We know that um, insect numbers have, uh, have dropped significantly. And we've known that for a time, but for some reason, we continue to build our housing estates in the same way. And it may be in some of the newer estates you get an eco park created, for example, like the one down in Teal Close. Like the one down in Teal Close that is, I understand, um, not currently been delivered, but I believe it will be part of the application. Thank you, uh, Councillor Smith. But the important things about these, we have to look to integrate our way of living with the natural world. Now, you might think to yourself, what does that look like? How can I put myself in that place where that is, that is a thing and that is how we live? Because at the moment, we're so not used to it that it seems incredibly difficult to think of. A very, if you like, sort of candid example, if, if I may, would be to look at something like centre parks. And that sounds like a, a bit of a strange statement, but if you think about when you stay at a lodge uh, at that holiday accommodation, you are in a house, you are surrounded by woodland, the cars visit once a week, uh, whether that be to drop your luggage off or collect it at the end, you are ineffectively surrounded by a natural environment. And it's something that obviously is in our own shire uh, over there in Shield Forest. And if you think about that on the way that we could build properties and the way that we could actually learn to live in our own houses. Now, maybe we could have parking facilities at the edge of our estates where we put our cars. And then maybe once a week, we would go and use those cars, collect them from there uh, and do what we need to do. And then the rest of those times, those streets, those pavements could be safe havens for our children to play in uh, and could actually improve our neighbourhoods uh, an incredible amount. Now, this motion really rung home to me. Um, the fantastic work that the Nottinghamshire Wildlife have put into uh, to work as far as the, the, way, the issues and the things that they raise. And I'd like to specifically look at some of the things around um, the trees and the hedgerows and adding additional water and other habitats that have been integrated with the development. But also things like um, the native wild, native wild friendly plants of local origin used in gardens and landscaping, something which I can relate to directly because I did the very same thing when I moved into my house. I took out a hedge that was an evergreen and underneath it, it was lifeless. I replaced that with a native species hedge and now it is an abundance of life with ladybirds and many other wild creatures within its um, base. So this motion really today is to offer an alternative. It's to give the planners, it's to give the residents, it's to give us as councillors a way of understanding how new developments can exist and how they balance against the eco ecological challenges that we are faced with, some as a result of climate change, but also some as a result of the way that we've chosen to design our areas and our streets in previous years. So I would ask you all today to support this. I think it's... Um, I know we've had some discussions around politics earlier already, but I think this is something that is completely without politics. This isn't about um, any competition between two sides. This is very much about us trying to make the lives of the things that surround us um, better and also give us all a better understanding of how these um, builds, these developments uh, qualify against the key criteria that I've mentioned within the actual confines. So I would ask that we create um, this planning uh, supplementary document with all these things included, and we really, really try and improve uh, the world around us all. Thank you. Councillor Smith to uh, Councillor Sam Smith to second. Thank you, Mayor. I formally second this motion that has been so eloquently presented by Councillor Adams and reserve the right to speak. Thank you. Would anybody like to speak on this? Councillor Payne. I don't wish to speak on it, Mr Mayor. I've got an amendment. Uh, does everybody have a copy of the amendment? No, not yet. Oh, it'll be circulated after I've spoken to it, Mr Mayor. All right. Carry on. Thank you. I uh, quite agree with Councillor Adams. The Wildlife Trusts and indeed our own Nottinghamshire Wildlife Trust do absolutely superb work and their Homes for People and Wildlife document 
that's referenced in Councillor Adams' uh, motion is a fantastic document that pulls together, I just said, the amendment will be circulated after I've spoken to it. Uh, Councillor uh, Payne is speaking to an amendment which he said will be uh, circulated once uh, Mr. Mir, it, is, it is custom and practice that the amendment would be circulated so we know what the member is speaking to. Mr. Gelfand, to to Mr. Mayor, can we propose that it's circulated and we adjourn for 10 minutes to review the amendment, please? I'll second that. Yeah, Mayor. Could, uh, Councillor Hollingsworth, I believe you were going to second it. Could you second it, please? The amendment. I thought I... Meant to consider the amendment. Yeah, but the, the amendment needs to be seconded. Right, well, I'll second it and reserve the right to speak then. Thank you. Uh, I'm proposing a, uh, a uh, adjournment for five minutes. Is that okay with you? Yeah, I second that. Let's go. Oh, we seconded the adjournment. I proposed it and somebody seconded it. We need a vote on the adjournment. Yeah. I'm sorry, we need the vote on the adjournment, please. All those in favour of adjourning for five minutes. Anyone against? Thank you. So we are now adjourned for five minutes. The amendment will be circulated.
Uh, just for your information, the five minutes starts now. If anybody, if anybody's
Okay. Right, uh, Councillor Payne. Councillor Payne. Councillor Payne, would you like to uh, speak on the uh, amendment, please? Are we recording, Kate? Yeah. Uh, so, um, as I was saying, uh, Mr. Mayor, I quite agree with uh, the sentiments of Councillor Adams' uh, motion, and I agree with the excellent work done by the Wildlife Trusts nationally, but also our own Wildlife Trust here in Nottinghamshire. Uh, I don't think there's anything in here that anybody in this council chamber would disagree with. This is the document that's referenced in Councillor Adams' motion, Homes for People and Wildlife, How to Build Housing in a Nature-Friendly uh, Way. And it's to that end, uh, Mr Mayor, that I move the Labour Group amendment to the motion uh, this evening. And I will read out uh, what the final substantive motion would be uh, were our amendment uh, duly accepted by the Council uh, in a moment. But first of all, I just wanted to talk to uh, why we have made the amendment that we have why we have made the amendment that we have uh, made i think the central point that lies at the heart of the original motion by councillor adams with uh, good intent we've heard from his speech tonight was about ensuring that the 15 features as referenced is in his original motion were given due consideration uh, by the planning committee uh, when planning for residential, predominantly residential developments in our borough, to ensure that those developments are built in a way that is sensitive not only to human beings that live on the planet, but also to the wildlife that we share this planet with and that we should uh, cherish. And Councillor Adams, in his motion, advances a perfectly reasonable vehicle for ensuring those features uh, are considered. He suggests, and I think we heard him say in his motion, uh, a supplementary planning document uh, was a good vehicle for doing that, also referred to in planning terms as, as, as an SPD. So the first amendment that the Labour Group wants to make to the motion tonight is to say that instead of a supplementary uh, planning document that deals with these 15 features uh, raised by the Wildlife Trust uh, in their uh, document that is referenced, we instead want to use a different vehicle. Our amendment commits this council formally to consulting Nottinghamshire Wildlife Trust, the experts, after all, who contributed to this fantastic document, on all major residential planning applications. So that would be all residential planning applications above 10 dwellings. That would mean, Mr Mayor, that when the planning committee were considering all major residential planning applications over 10 dwellings, the Wildlife Trust, Nottinghamshire Wildlife Trust, will have been formally consulted in terms of the issues that they raise uh, in their document, in terms of whether the applicants had given due consideration to planning for wildlife in the way that Councillor Adams uh, talked about. That's not a statutory requirement for the council, but that is something that this Labour group wants to commit, and I hope cross-party tonight we can get agreement on this motion, wants to commit the council to doing, so that we hear from the experts. And I know it's not trendy to hear from the experts, Mr Mayor, but the planning committee is made up, I think as Councillor Adams uh, said, of lay people and having the appropriate information in front of you and listening to the experts, and Councillor Adams lauded the Wildlife Trust tonight, I quite agree with him, so this would commit our amendment to making sure that the Wildlife Trust voice, research, expertise, insight and challenge was in the room for the planning committee and that there'd been a formal opportunity in terms of consulting them uh, before a decision is made by the planning committee. Why else do I think there is not necessarily a need for a supplementary planning document which is the vehicle for making sure these issues are raised in the planning committee that, that, that Councillor Adams has put in his motion. Because the 15 features that Councillor Adams raises in his motion, I'm not going to read them all, Councillor Hollingsworth will deal with some of them later, but things like permeable driveways to help reduce flood risks, things like trees, hedgerows, water and other habitats integrated within development, 
Things like sustainable urban drainage, swales and rain gardens for wildlife and flood relief. Things like wildlife friendly green roofs uh, and walls. Just some of the 15 features captured, important features in this document. Why is there not a need, in our view as a Labour group, for a supplementary planning document to ensure these issues are a material consideration for the planning committee? Because, Mr Mayor, and I would have expected Councillor Adams to know this, all of those issues are already contained within the council's existing local planning document, which all councillors voted for, including the uh, Conservative uh, group. It was voted through um, unanimously. They're contained within the Align Core strategy. They're contained within the council's recently adopted low carbon planning guidance for Gedlin Borough. And he will know this, uh, working with our two Conservative members of Parliament, they are contained within the National Planning Policy Framework. All of those documents guide the decisions that our planning committee makes and are material, that is to say legal considerations in planning terms, when decisions are being made in terms of residential development. So the point I'm making, Mr Mayor, is that these issues are already and should already be considerations for our planning committee when dealing with uh, residential developments. An additional supplementary planning uh, document effectively would add no further weight in terms of being a material uh, consideration. And the final part of our amendment, uh, Mr Mayor, is to note the Wildlife Trust, who is lauded tonight, quite rightly by Councillor Adams, for this fantastic document. And any members of the public listening to the uh, meeting tonight, please do go and read the Homes for People and Wildlife document by the Wildlife Trust. It is, as Councillor Adams said, superb, very thoughtful, uh, sets out challenges to all of us who are decision makers in public life. What is also really interesting, and, and I do accept what Councillor Adams said at the end of his speech about, you know, let's not make this about party politics, but just forgive me, Councillor Adams, you know, we don't operate as a planning authority in splendid isolation. We are governed by a strategic framework set out by national government whether that were a Labour government, whether it were a coalition government, or whether, as it happens to be at the moment, a Conservative uh, government. That's not, you know, you don't have to believe me to say that. Talk to any of the residents in our wards who have all taken an interest, I think, in recent weeks and months about announcements that have been made by government departments in relation to uh, planning matters. So the final part, uh, and I finish on this, uh, Mr Mayor, is that the Wildlife Trust, who is lauded tonight by Councillor Adams, and I agree with him, has been really strong in its opposition to the government's proposed changes to the planning system set out in their planning for the future white paper. I'm not going to let tonight's debate stray into a wider argument and debate about the planning reforms and how strongly we may feel for them or against them. I certainly have strong opposition to them uh, as an elected member for a number of reasons. But the final part of our amendment draws attention to the fact that the Wildlife Trust, who Councillor Adams lords tonight, has significant concerns about the planning reforms put forward by the government, which are still, as at today, on the table. Maybe the Prime Minister agrees with the Labour group here, because I understand that the Secretary of State for uh, Housing, Communities and Local Government has been sacked in the reshuffle, so maybe the Prime Minister thinks these planning reforms need ditching and we need a, a new broom. I hope that Secretary of State Gove um, re-looks re over this uh, issue. I know that he's very passionate about uh, wildlife uh, and nature, obviously, in his, his previous role in, in DEFRA. They, they say, Mr Mayor, the Wildlife Trust, to quote them, that the planning reforms risk creating a disconnected landscape, one in which wildlife continues to decline because nature doesn't slot into neat little boxes. And their concern, Mr Mayor, is about the three planning zones uh, that would be set out by the government nationally. And finally, Mr Mayor, one of the most significant concerns the Wildlife Trust has got you know, and they talk about some of these issues in the document, and it's there on the website, is about the planning reforms undermining the opportunity for local members of public and organisations like Nottinghamshire Wildlife Trust to have their say uh, on planning applications. All of the chance to raise issues would be done at the front end of the matter when these new planning zones were set out. When it came to a specific application, the reforms, as they are set out at the moment by the government, which they want to introduce, would denigrate the opportunity for members of the public and local organisations to be involved. And the Wildlife Trust are gravely concerned about that. So the final part of the amendment, Mr Mayor, is that this council therefore resolves taking a proactive stance about both our local, what we can do here locally, 
formally committing ourselves to consult the Wildlife Trust on every major residential plan application. And then nationally, we resolve to write into the Secretary of State, obviously now that will be a new Secretary of State, Michael Gove, and the borough's two local members of parliament who helpfully happen to be from the uh, governing party in, in, in this regard, setting out this council's shared concern with the Wildlife Trust about the negative impact on wildlife arising from the proposals in the government's plan for the future white paper. So that's not a broader debate about the planning reforms. We can have that debate elsewhere. It's specifically about the concerns that the Wildlife Trust sets out in terms of the planning reforms. Because at the end of the day, Mr Mayor, and I'll just conclude on this point, yeah. we don't make decisions in splendid isolation. We are governed by the National Planning Policy Framework. We are governed by planning policy guidance set out by the National uh, government and the reforms, but also, as Councillor Adams said, we're governed by our own documentation. And I'm certainly very, very pleased that we already cover it in our local planning document, in the low carbon planning guidance, uh, it's in the national planning Thank policy you. framework. Thank you, Councillor. And so Payne. there are already material I have considerations. Been very lenient. Uh, there's a 10 minute rule on speeches. You've had about 12 or 13 uh, minutes. Uh, you have made your case. Thank you very much. Uh, I'll, I'll, yes, well, Councillor Smith. You. Thank you, Mr Mayor. In moving this amendment, what we've just heard from the Labour group is instead of taking action tonight, Labour have chosen words again, Mr Mayor. Labour's uh, re uh, resolution to the, uh, is to amend, is to, Labour's resolution in this um, amendment is to write a letter in stark contrast to our motion, which would involve introducing a planning document to help ensure our planners can improve wildlife on any developments. Actions, not words, is in our motion. But again, Labour choose words, and it is very, very disappointing, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Smith. Uh, Councillor Hope. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Um, it's, it's quite clear that, that everybody in the room um, is sort of in agreement on um, taking on board the, the comments from the Wildlife Trust. Uh, and, and I am too. Um, when, I, when I read the motion, I thought it's very good. But I'm not convinced that the best way forward is, in fact, a, a supplementary planning document. Um, the, the reason I say this um, is because once it's a planning document, then actually the only thing that will be considered is what is in that document. Nothing else. However, if, and, and I don't think they are at the moment, if, if the Wildlife Trust um, was to become a consultee, then in fact their comments could range much further than the 15 items here. It could bring in whatever they thought was germane. Um, you know, they, they could look at wider impacts from a development that may not be included in those 15 issues and their comments would be written down every time there was a, a large uh, planning application. So on balance, I'm in favour of making the Wildlife Trust a consultee on planning applications. And I've also got to say that um, I, I look at one of the things on this list of 15, which is renewable energy water efficiency built in from the outset. And I don't know how many years I've been banging on about that at the planning committee. I've raised it virtually every time we, we've had uh, a major planning application. Um, and actually, I, I haven't been successful once. Maybe if every time they come up, the Wildlife Trust is banging on about it as well, I might have a modicum more success because then there'll be me and at least one other group commenting on it. So I really do feel that if, if we want this 
to work if we want to take wildlife into account, if we want to do the very best we can, we are better off having them there as consultees than actually limiting ourselves to these 15 issues. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Hope. Uh, Adams. Thank you, Mayor Lawrence. Um, just an initial point on the motion itself. It's not in the spirit of the motion. We reject it on that basis. Yeah. Um, I'm, you know, I literally, I can't believe I'm sitting here and listening to this. I mean, you've turned what is a non-political motion about improving the way we build houses, improving how we build um, residential development, and you've turned it into, well, I don't even know what you've turned it into. It's a political broadcast um, by the Labour Party. Let's write to the government. Let's write to the government. Everything is default with you lot. Let's write to the government. And it's so disappointing. It's so disappointing that we sit here and we have rights to the government again. I mean, you, you missed the entire point. You focused your entire thing on beating the Conservatives again, which, look, congratulations, you've got more numbers than us, you, you've won, you've, you've beat the Conservatives, congratulations, you know, you, I'm, sure, I'm sure you're really proud of yourself. Um, but unfortunately, what you haven't done is you haven't helped the wildlife in Gedlin Borough. Mm, yeah, yeah. You, 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 you talk about, you talk about um, green lungs, I mean, you love to drop this, this term about green lungs, but you don't really know what it means, because this proves that you don't know what it means. Um, and once again, we sit here, as Councillor Smith rightly pointed out, with words, with words, not actions, mm. again, mm. kicked into the long grass. It, it's an absolute embarrassment, it really is. And, you know, it, it, we keep trying to bring these things, and you, you, even, you even pontificated earlier about how all the Conservatives' questions are all politically motivated, and, oh, we're trying to do this and we're trying to do that, and you, you just, you know, this is the hypocrisy that puts people off coming into politics. Yeah. And I think that puts people off coming into council meetings, you know. Um, so, look, I mean, I, it, it's incredibly disappointing. The, the Wildlife Trust did a fantastic job with this paper. Um, and, you know, I, I'm, I'm happy to, obviously, as I did do with the motion, commend them for it and, and bring it forward. You know, it, it's, it's disappointing, it's sad. You know, and, you know, unlucky wildlife in Gedling Borough again. Labour Party won, wildlife nil. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Councillor Creamer. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Just to say, I couldn't listen to that, that tirade about uh, just talking. We've actually got a history of actually performing with PVs, with environmental issues. We've actually done far more than most we declared the a climate emergency long before the county, long before many others in any district. We have actually got a very positive and a very good history of action. So to actually say that we're just doing words is absolutely wrong. There's an absolutely positive in this, and that's making, the, making a, positive, a new actual compulsory... Uh, the words I'm looking for, I've gone out of my head, actually, to actually make sure that they are consulted, a consultee, that's the word I was looking for. To add a consultee to, to our documents is perfectly right. The problems with an external document and other documents to look at is it will get amended now and then, sometimes good, sometimes bad, but it will create confusion. To have another body look over us and say, well, this is what we want, this is what we'd like, and to discuss it properly, I think, as Mike Hope has actually was already said, it's an absolute positive move. It's not talking, and it will be acted on immediately after we've actually had this vote. So don't just say we, we're talking. We don't just talk. We've actually got a proud history of actually acting, and we will act again. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Creamer. Is there anybody else? Uh, Councillor uh, Truscott. Yeah, thank you, uh, Mr Mayor. Um, yes, well, uh, obviously we know that um, Councillor Adams has been a very active member of the planning committee and we have heard some of his views before, uh, particularly on the uh, conflicts that there always are uh, between planning and nature and development and the environment. 
Um, but I think that um, Councillor Payne did lay out um, most of the, the uh, issues here in that uh, these matters, uh, which obviously we have to consider the, uh, the material planning considerations, as, as Councillor Adam well knows, and most of the issues about the conflict between planning and nature and development and the environment is contained in the NPPF and our own local planning documents uh, in particular, which was debated at great length by uh, all the political parties involved in, in Gedling Borough Council. Um, we, you know, Councillor Adam says, you know, that we talk about politics. Well, we've got to talk about politics because it's the, the government that is in power that instructs the planning committee basically on what they can and cannot do. I mean, we, would, we have been uh, given a mandate um, by which, you know, the government that we have to build 7,250 houses in between 2011 and 2028. There's nothing we can do about that. We've got to do it. Um, and one of the problems that we have um, in Gedling is that we are very strictly bounded by Greenbelt, which accentuates these problems. Um, but I, I appreciate the, uh, the list of um, these things that were uh, given bullet points by Councillor Adams. And nearly all this is taken in consideration when we decide things at planning committees within our power to, uh, to decide these sort of things. And I think any sort of concept where we're looking at everybody living in a centre parks environment is simply um, quite a ridiculous suggestion from Councillor and Adams, and uh, I think he knows it. There are some other points here that I could nitpick on, but I'm not going to bother because I know probably other people want to speak. But I would basically like to say that I fully support Councillor Payne and every point that he has come out with, and I'll certainly be supporting this amendment. Thank you, Councillor Truscott. Uh, anybody else like to speak? Councillor Hollingsworth. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I, I just find it so difficult to understand why Councillor Adams doesn't get it. It's already been explained to him that the bullet points that he's raised are already covered in the planning documents, the MPPF planning policy guidance uh, and other documents. It, it astonishes me, but I will make the following observations in, support, in uh, seconding the amendment. Nottinghamshire Wildlife Trust is a well-respected, valued and valuable organisation. And whilst there's been no statutory requirement to consult with them prior to making planning decisions, we have very much welcomed any comments received and have always considered their views in reports prior to making any decision. This amendment will strengthen and enhance what is a mutually respectful relationship by formalising a commitment to consult. Mr Mayor, I just do not recognise the large void in the Council's existing decision-making process as stated by Councillor Adams in its motion. And as Councillor Adams is a member of the Planning Committee, he should know this very well. It's very pleasing, Mr Mayor, to see some green credentials tonight and environmental concerns. So I'm sure that the Conservative group and, and Councillor Adams himself have asked the MP for Sherwood and the MP for Gedling why this government is allowing hundreds of thousands of gallons of raw sewerage every day into our waterway seas, and why the climate change promises have been secretly dropped in order to get a trade deal with a country that has a poor record on environmental protections. I also picked up yesterday, I can't remember where I read it, but the government's pledged something like 600,000 uh, ground source heat pumps installation. UK is the lowest in any other country at about 14%. It is lagging well, well behind. This needs national legislation, national input. It is not something that local authorities can do on their own. As the amendment states, the features listed in the motion are already contained in the, the Council's local plan, 
the Align Core Strategy and other planning guidance. Mr Mayor, just for the benefit of people who might be looking in, this is the local plan part two. It was widely consulted on, independently inspected, and was adopted in 2018, having been unanimously accepted by the Council. The policies within are all material planning considerations. It is an important Council document, especially for those who sit on the planning committee, and they should have at least a basic understanding of its contents. I'll now speak to some of the features that were identified in the, in the motion. Permeable, permeable driveways to help reduce flood risk. LPD4, LPD refers to the local planning document. LPD4B relates to areas at risk of surface water flooding and requires development proposals involving additional areas of hard standing to ensure that adequate appropriate consideration has been given to mitigating water flood risk. Paragraph 452 refers specifically to mitigation measures, including the use of permeable materials to increase infiltration. I could go on, there are other things. Trees, hedgerows, water and other habitats. Wherever possible, hedgerows, mature trees should be preserved and enhanced as landscape and ecological features. LPD 28 for conservation areas requires proposals in conservation areas to protect trees, hedgerows, open spaces, other significant landscape features and incorporate landscaping appropriate to the character and appearance of the area. Our low carbon planning guidance for Gedling Borough, paragraph 436, refers to urban trees, hedgerows and other habitats to help mini minimise the relative heating of urban areas and reduce the need for heating and cooling within buildings which reduce carbon emissions. Wildflower verges along roads and formal spaces. LPD 18, protecting and enhancing biodiversity. Thank you, Councillor Hollingsworth. Could I'm you wind sorry, up Mr. now? Mayor, this is ridiculous. Yeah. This is a, a, a huge motion. It's yeah, I understand issue, that. And I really, but... really resent being cut off when I have not concluded. Uh, I have my been lenient uh, with disgrace. both yourselves and uh, Councillor Payne. I'm just following standing orders. You are able to use a bit of discretion, Mr Mayor, which I expected you to do on an important issue. Uh, I think it might be an idea if you gave a copy of that to the Conservative group so they could read it and they wouldn't need you to uh, actually... They don't need a copy, Mr Mayor. It's all in the public domain. Well, well quite. Uh, Councillor Payne, would you like to close on the amendment? Unless there's... Um, should ask if there's anybody else who wants to speak who hasn't spoken. If not, Councillor Payne, could you close on the amendment, please? Thank you very much, Mr Mayor. I'll keep this very brief. Uh, Councillor Hope, superb point that you make, uh, which is in answer to Councillor Sam Smith. I, I know this is all about sound bites. I know this is all about getting a clip so you can put it on Twitter and Facebook when you leave here. So the action, not words, or you know, just words, no action, and banging on about letters. Councillor Hope made the point very, very eloquently. This amendment tonight gives an opportunity to commit this council locked in to the Wildlife Trust being formally consulted on every major residential housing development over 10 houses so that they are properly heard, are properly listened to and are able to put across their expertise and insight. That is action. It is not just words. And let me just respond to the second point about letters that was made by Councillor Smith and Councillor Adams. I quite agree with you. It probably is a pointless part of the motion, because I tell you what, virtually every single letter we've sent to your government ministers and local MPs never gets a bloody response anyway. And then let me just finish on this point, uh, Mr Mayor. Let me just finish on this point, uh, Mr., uh, Mr Mayor. I know this is a heart on the sleeve debate tonight, and I know this is about who can outdo who on loving wildlife uh, or not, but let me just say this to you about my group. Not about me, but about the people who sit behind me in my group. When accusations are thrown about people who don't care about wildlife, the remark about getting Labour one wildlife nil. Say that to Councillor Nicky Brooks 
and Mark Glover, internationally renowned campaigners before they were borough councillors here, against fur being stripped off animals and killed them. Say that, Councillor Adams, to Catherine Fox, to Roxanne Ellis, to John Clark, who fought to make sure that food was being collected for animals that had been mistreated as part of domestic violence. Say it to people like John Truscott or others who argued in this group to make sure that there were pollinator zones and butterfly zones so that we're playing our part in terms of protecting some of the animals. And say it, Mr Mayor, to my party, the Labour Party, who proudly has campaigned for the last few decades while your party and government has tried to bring back fox hunting, while it continues to pursue damn badges, including in this borough, and treats them appallingly in terms of the call. It was this administration that created a 365-acre Gedling Country Park. It was this administration that put beehives at the heart of the solar panel that sits at the top of Gedling Country Park. It was this administration that introduced a motion to stop Chinese lanterns flying around the borough, landing in agricultural land, and then doing harm to the creatures that live on those farms. So I know you want your sound clip tonight. I know you want to claim that you're allied to David Attenborough and that you're doing more about wildlife than we are. But you don't have to believe me, Mr Mayor. This administration, this Labour group that proudly sits behind me, has a track record of standing up for wildlife and will continue to stand up for wildlife. Whatever the silly games that are played by Councillor Adams and his colleagues tonight, this is, a, this is a motion that commits the Council to listening to the Wildlife Trust, as Councillor Truscott said. And if we want to do something about playing our part in terms of planning, and they really care about the issues, and they don't just care about creating a soundbite, they'll have the decency to support this motion. Councillor Hollingsworth, as our Cabinet Member, is doing an outstanding job. Councillor John Truscott is one of the most professional chairs of a planning committee we've ever had in this Council and gives a fair hearing to people. And just because they don't agree with the amendment, Mr Mayor, they don't like it. The argument hasn't gone their way. They haven't got a hearing on Twitter. And what do they turn around and say? It's not within the spirit of the motion. How disgraceful. This amendment's been approved by the Chief Executive. It's been approved by the Monitoring Officer. It's been approved by a Head of Democratic Services. But no, you're the expert, Councillor Adams. You've turned up and you're now telling everybody that they don't fit in with your way of the world because you didn't get your own way. If you want to do something about protecting wildlife, if you want to not wait nine months to introduce a supplementary planning document and instead take action now so that the Wildlife Trust is consulted, then you'll back the Labour Group amendment, you'll back the wildlife in, borough, in this borough and you'll keep this borough moving forward in terms of people and animals living in harmony. Thank you, Mr Mayor. Thank you, Councillor Payne. We will now take a vote on accepting Councillor Payne's amendment. All those in favour, please show. Any against? I'd like a record, recorded vote, Mr Mayor. Uh, is that seconded? Yeah. Okay. On the amendment, yes. Yeah, poorly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Oh, I'm... I'm sorry, I've been told that we've already started voting, so we can't, we can't. Right, uh, the amendment is one, become the substantive motion. Would anybody like to speak on the motion as amended? If not, Councillor Payne, you've got a right of reply. I've nothing further to say, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. But, uh, but, no, hang on a minute, Mr. I haven't finished. But I would like a vote on the substantive motion. Is that seconded? Yeah. Okay. Well, uh, Councillor Adams, uh, would you like to close? Uh, I'll wrap up. I'll um, use my remarks. I reserve my remarks. I, I have in my instructions that Councillor uh, Adams can close on the amendment, which is now the substantive. Thank you, uh, Mayor Lawrence. Councillor Smith did reserve his right to speak. Uh, it's too late for that, I'm afraid. What? Isn't it? It's too late to reserve his right to speak. 
Pretty sure that's not the case. Speak before Councillor. Oh, no, Sorry, uh, Councillor Smith, you can speak before Councillor Adams closes. Thank you, Mayor Lawrence. Thank you, Mayor. Just to pick up on a few points, Councillor Hollingsworth mentioned planning members' understanding planning policy. Councillor Hope, I'd just like to enlighten you. I know you sit on the committee, but maybe you need enlightening with some of the um, policies there. The Wildlife Trust is already consulted on planning applications. Apart from that, Mr Mayor, I have nothing else to add because we on the Conservative group were prepared to take action tonight rather than words. Instead, thanks to Labour, Gedling's wildlife will suffer with words and not action. Can I make a point of explanation, Mr Mayor? There is no statutory requirement to consult with the Nottinghamshire Wildlife Trust. They do get consulted on occasion, but it is not a universal uh, matter that they get consulted on every planning application. This was to actually formalise that so that they were consulted on every application where it concerned 10 or more homes. Thank you, Councillor Hollingsworth. Sorry, just to answer Councillor Hollingsworth, it's... Yes, please. Sorry, uh, Mr Met. she did ask for a point of clarification. I'm right in saying that. That would mean that surely Councillor Smith needs to clarify, or is... Explanation. I do apologise, I misheard her, thank you. So yes, thank you, I will, uh, <laughs> I will wrap up now if that's okay. Um, yes, I think I've said really all I need to, uh, to say uh, about the situation tonight. Um, the disappointment is real. We see way too many um, applications go through and, and discussions not had around wildlife. I've been in those rooms and I know the conversations that, that, that happen. Um, I've been in the planning committee here and although occasionally when the issue is raised, you know, we're not getting to the nitty gritty of the actual um, planning applications um, and looking and really dealing with the wildlife problem. And like I said, you know, from today, we could have had a document or within a couple of weeks, we could have had a document in place that ensured that when it went to the planning um, committee or residents saw it, it was a very obvious list of things it could have been as simply as this is, you know, this qualifies for that. It doesn't have a permeable driveway, but it has a cycleway. It doesn't have uh, plants and animal um, access, but it does have a permeable hedges. I mean, it's it's so simple. The fact we've spoke so long about it, I'm afraid, is it, it, just ridiculous because it, it, we're missing the point. And instead, we've got an, a letter which, oh, do you know what that letter? I mean. We're dealing with levels of, well, campaigning that we've not come across before, you know, in, in history. I mean, that's going to do really great things, that letter. So good luck with your letter. I'll just keep campaigning for the plants and animals and uh, the uh, greenery and the improvements to health and well-being of everybody that lives in housing estates while you write your letter. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Adams. Right, uh, a, a recorded vote has been called for uh, Mr Hill. Thank you, Mr Mayor. We now have a proposer and a seconder for recorded vote. So as I call out your name, please can you clearly state whether you vote for or against a motion or abstain from voting? Thank you. Councillor Adams. Abstain. Councillor Peter Barnes. Councillor Sandra Barnes. Four. Councillor Barnfather. Four. Councillor Brooks. Four. Councillor Clark. Four. Councillor Clooney. Four. Councillor Collis. Four. Councillor Creamer. Four. Councillor Elliot. Councillor David Ellis. Four. Councillor Rachel Ellis. Four. Councillor Roxanne Ellis. Four. 
Councillor Elwood. Councillor Fox. Councillor Gibbons. Four. Councillor Greensmith. Abstain. Councillor Gregory. Councillor Hollingsworth. Councillor Hope. Councillor Keneally. Mr. Mayor. Four. Councillor Ron McCrossan. Four. Councillor Viv McCrossan. Four. Councillor Miller. Four. Councillor Nayuk. Four. Councillor Paling. Four. Councillor Parr. Abstain. Councillor Payne. Four action, not abstentions. Councillor Scroggy. Councillor Scroggy. Four. Councillor Martin Smith. Abstain. Councillor Sam Smith. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. I abstain from more words and no action. <laughs> Councillor Towsey Hinton. Councillor Truscott. Councillor Wheeler. Four. Councillor Wilkinson. Four. Uh, that motion is carried, um, and, with, and with that, uh, thank you for your attention. I'll close the meeting and wish you all a safe journey home.